Hello and welcome to the Chart of the Week video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Wednesday the 17th of April 2019 and the time has just gone 12.15 British summer time. And this week's Chart of the Week is gold. And as we can see, gold has had a major uh, push higher from August last year. Uh, particularly from November onwards, it really started to push higher. And the level that we that we reached in February was a level not seen since April 2018. So we had a major rally, uh, really beginning in August last year, but really since about mid-November, as you see, a nice kind of um, a nice um, push to the upside. But since November, uh, since, uh, apologies, since February here, uh, when it when it hit its hit its highest level since June, since um, since April 2018, we have beginning to see a bit of a move to the downside. We're seeing uh, lower lows and lower highs. Uh, so we're seeing a series, uh, what could be the beginning of a further move to the downside. So an upward trend is higher highs and higher lows. Or conversely, a downward trend is defined as lower lows and lower highs. And precisely what we're seeing here. And notice how the lows of yesterday managed to actually take out the lows of uh, late January. So... The market could hang around here and look to press on higher and continue the wider trend, but it could also be a case uh, that this is actually kind of a, a kind of a wider correction of the up move that we saw between August last year and February this year. So we've been pushing to the downside recently, uh, turning our attention to the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator down here. We can see there's been a steady increase in momentum, uh, which confirms the downward move we're seeing in the underlying market. If you do manage to actually trade below. Uh, this area here in around 12.76, that would be the kind of creation of new multi-month lows. And we could see support coming into play in around this area here, where there's pre previous consolidation in around the 12.60 mark, or even below that in around the 12.50 area in around here. As you can see, 12.50 uh, acted as resistance on a few of occasions back in December last year. And if the metric has acted as resistance in the past, it might act as support in the near term. Now that's if the market manages to actually have a sizable break below this area here. We're pretty much on it now, in around 12.75, 12.60. Should we see the market uh, hold above that area and should that, that area act as support, we could see the market actually pressing on higher, retaking the, uh, the kind of the psychologically important 1300 mark. And if you take out this high here, uh, the high of, of mid-April in around 13.10, that could be a sign that the wider upward trend is going to continue and should we break north of 13.10 we could be looking at targeting uh, the, the, the the high here in, 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 uh, in late March um, in a 13.24 and then should, should we go beyond that we could be looking at retesting the very high in around the kind of 13.46 region. Now if you are going to be trading the gold market uh, it's worth keeping an eye on what's going on with the US dollar. Uh, there's often been an inverse relationship between the US dollar and the, uh, and the gold market Gold listed in US dollars, so the more expensive and the, and, and the stronger the greenback is, often the more pressure puts on the offer, often the more pressure puts on the, on the on the gold market, and vice versa. Should we see a a, a decline in the US dollar, that, that often helps uh, the, the gold market. So even though the gold market, even though the, the US dollar index, which I'm looking at here, has been drifting lower recently. We're not too far away um, from the high in March, and, and the high in March was actually the highest level since June 2017. So in the, in the wider scheme of things, <clears throat> the US dollar is quite expensive. Now, even though the Federal Reserve uh, appear to be actually sit, uh, to, appear to be having a neutral policy and they don't seem like they're interested in raising rates in 2019, given that the European Central Bank are, uh, are, are, are going to have a, a new easing policy, or, or sorry, apologies, a new targeted liquidity policy in September, there's uncertainty in relation to Brexit from the Bank of England. Um, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Bank of Japan, they've both used dovish language. Given that other currencies around the world are looking a bit soft, we could see that the US dollar be, be, um, it become relatively strong. And should it become relatively strong, that could impact the gold market. Uh, for those of you who are trading gold, it's also worth keeping an eye on what's going on in silver. Dow theory tells us uh, that the averages must confirm each other. So if we're seeing multi-month lows being created in gold, we'd like to see that as well to be created in silver so we can become more confident that the bearish move is going to continue and vice versa. If, if gold is hitting multi-month highs, we'd like to see silver market doing something similar. So because if both markets are moving in the same direction, you can become more confident that, that particular move is going to continue. Uh, as we can see here, 
Silver had a fairly solid rally between November and February, like with gold. And since, fe and since February, we've also seen a series of higher highs and higher lows on the silver market. In fact, only a few days ago, we had a level not seen since late December on silver. So keep an eye on silver as well for, for all of you who are trading gold. Uh, one last thing before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Marcus, please feel free to leave a review and give reviews. Thank you very much.